Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting and Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkoviak, and today we're going to be talking about this dude right here, my new hunting mountain bike, fat tire bike. Uh, I'm going to cover a little bit about how I got it set up. I'm going to cover a little bit about the bike itself. It is not expensive. What my intentions are, some of the, th the mods I've done, changes I made, we're going to kind of break this whole thing down here for you. First off, this is how it would be set up in deer hunting mode. Okay, that would be it right there. Now my backpack will go inside of here. Okay, my backpack would go in that crate. Um, the kicker part, the tricky part is um, if I were to kill a deer and have to try and take a deer out in one load, I'm, that I don't know about yet if I'm going to be able to swing that. I might have to come back for a boned out, um, you know, for boned out deer, or I might even buy a small trailer if I use this a lot for deer hunting. Now, realistically, deer hunting wise, I don't see myself using it a ton, um, but I will be using it a tremendous amount for pigs. But even for deer, I'll bet that I can put uh, boned out deer inside of this crate, even if it sticks up a little higher, um, set that stand on there, put my pack on there, and be good to go. I could probably even wear my pack on my body because um, that pack would be like right here. might be a little tight, so I probably would not wear my pack on me um, with all this stuff on here, I would probably throw my pack right up on top of this and strap it right down on there too with that game bag of meat down there low as possible. So that's kind of the setup that I'm thinking about. Now I do have the bar hooks on here in the front that I can put my Henry on if I want to, or I had my bow on there, but I'll show you when I put my bow on there, it sticks out too far on the sides. You can see this profile here it's not sticking out very far. When that 64 inch longbow is on there, it's a pretty wide profile. This kind of narrows that up uh, quite a bit and makes it where I can get down stuff a lot better. And these clamps on here, say I were to catch a tree or clip a tree or something with my bow, um, this stuff will just knock right off. It's just clamps held on here so I'm not going to break my bow or damage anything. If I were to take a spill and fall, this is going to pop off. This is not uh, heavily permanently mounted like these are where that bow would take the brunt of stuff and could could damage my bow so it's just um, sweet simple and easy but it's rock solid not going anywhere um, and I'll explain what I have going on here for you so it makes sense and so you can see what's what on this setup here and why and the versatility of it so but this is kind of how I'm thinking of setting it up here if I were deer hunting stands and sticks there my backpack would go in here my pack without the sticks and stands on it will fit in that uh, crate right there perfectly and then I put this stuff right on top of there and I'm set to go. If I kill a deer, I'd probably bike out with this setup, drop the stick stands, bow and everything, and then go back to pick up the deer and put the boned out deer and head and everything in there. This is a 310 pound rack that's on there. So this rack is more than capable of holding the weight, so is the bike. So, um, And like I said, I don't think I'd risk trying to take it all out in one trip uh, just for the weight factor up there alone. I mean, you start talking, uh, you know, 20 pounds of sticks and stands, and then you start talking uh, 10 pounds of pack uh, up high, and then you start talking, you know, 60 pounds of boned out meat in there. The, you know, Bo, you got 100 and something pounds right on there. It might be doable. I don't know. I haven't experimented that far yet to see. Um so we will figure that one out. But most likely, if I'm, you know, I mean, if you figure, if you can ride, if even if I'm only riding 10 miles an hour, um, you know, if I'm, I'm five miles in, it takes me a half hour to get back and drop this stuff and a half hour back again to go get that deer. I'll do that all day long and just dump this stuff, come back for the boned out deer. So that's my intentions um, as far as the setup is on this kind of thing. But you can see that that works really good. Keeps that out of the way. Keeps it out of my cockpit. So I'm here and I'm riding on a bike. That bow is not interfering with me or bothering me in any kind of way. Um, so I have the room. So it's a fantastic setup. Uh, works really good. It's just strapped on there. It's dead quiet. I have the foam on these. There's no noise that comes from this thing at all. It's dead silent. I'm shaking it all. You know, there's no no noise, no rattle, no nothing. Not that the noise factor, you're going to hear it shifting and, you know, riding anyway. But point being... It's quiet, no metal clanking, stuff like that. And it's uh, a nice tight profile, uh, not much wider than the bars. 
so it'll let me get through the trails or anything like that. Realistically, I will be using this more so on uh, power lines and dirt roads and things like that that are actually closed where they uh, close them off and you can't get access to them. Uh, it's pedal, foot, or uh, horse access only, no motorized vehicle. That's why this is non-motorized. I did not want an e-bike uh, because of the, uh, the fact that I cannot use them in many places. They are considered a motorized motorcycle and not legal um, in certain areas that I'm going to. So pedal power only. This is the kind of the setup. So I'm going to kind of show you how I'm going to run it. for. But that's the setup for deer. All right. So I'm trying as hard as I can to avoid having to carry a trailer. I do not want to carry a trailer and deal with that. I don't want to store the trailer in my vehicle. I don't want to have it in the back of my truck. I don't want to have to mess with it, hook it up. I don't want it bouncing and shaking all around and making all kinds of racket. I don't want to fight with it going over logs and stuff like that and, and through holes. And I don't want to deal with a trailer. I'm trying as hard as I can to avoid that. This system, I think, is what's going to do the best for me, um, but might require require me to come back you know drop that stuff at the car and then come back in to grab the uh a boned out deer and put that deer in that in that crate so that's what i'm thinking um these like i said originally my intentions were putting that bow across here i don't like how wide it is but i am leaving them on there for two reasons one is because like i said i can put a uh put my henry on there if i want to use that for any any times during pig season or small game or any of that kind of stuff i can put something up there um and uh, I'm, I'm not saying what it is because you get demonetized for stuff like that. So, um, but anyway, I can have that on there. And uh, um, then I can also, um, when I tip this bike over to pull the wheels off and things like that or anything I got to do, it's kind of the perfect height. These, which you can see are already all scuffed up, but this and that crate sit perfect. When I flip this thing over, they keep it at the exact same height, which is nice. So if when I'm like when I'm uh, working on wheel bearings or uh, setting anything or doing stuff or tightening spokes or whatever I want to do maintenance wise on here, it stands upside down perfectly. And I can put, like I said, anything I want to on here, which is kind of nice. So, all right. So let me show you how I'm going to set it up in pig mode and then we'll be right back. Okay. In pig mode, very easy. My pig hunting pack, my camel back just lays right down here in a crate. If I kill a pig, I can bone it out, put th that in there, and have that backpack in there or wear the backpack so I don't have all that extra space up here with the stands. So with my uh, sitting on the seat, I can still wear that camel backpack all day long without an issue. Um, but... Uh, I can fit that backpack and a boned out pig in there. Boned out pigs aren't, you know, unless I'm killing an absolute monster. And even if I am, because of losing the weight of the stands and sticks, I'd have no problem packing that out in one shot on this. So it's got an ultimate little pig hunting machine. Again, notice these little clamps I'm using. All they are is just a basically a little clamp. I took some wash machine hose. Okay, this is washer machine hosing, just standard stuff. And then what I did is I just cut a notch out of it, you know, just took and cut a square notch out of one side so that I could fit it over this clamp. That's all I did. Made many of these. I'll show you an example of one in the garage here in a minute. Um, that's, that's open or I'll show you. But, uh, but what that does is that gives me that solid mount. So with this on here, again, to profile that bike... And that bow doesn't stick out further than my bars at all. So it's a perfect setup as far as being able to run that through the woods. It's stable as can be, doesn't move. Uh, just got the string resting in that one, a limb there. And like I said, nice, simple profile. Um, still access into my pack and everything in here if I need to. But uh, that stuff will all be in there. But it's a quiet, simple setup that's going to work absolutely fantastic. So this is my pig hunting mode. Um, and like I said, killing a pig, I'd have no problem boning them out, putting a pig in that crate, putting my pack on top of that, or even wearing a, my little camel back pack pack. It's actually a mountain biking pack that I, I pig hunt with. So, but pig hunting wise, this is how I'm going to run this dude. It's going to be set up pretty good. Um, and I should be in great shape, but like I said, deer hunting with that stand on there will work great too. These, um, um, but it's just real simple. Just, you know, it's just bungee cords, you know, nothing, nothing crazy or, or ridiculous and then you just set it there and you pull your bow out of there i mean that's all there is to it now if i set this down let's set it right here out of the way so if we look at this these are just oh, actually still rubber bands on that one but uh this clamp here what we're looking at is just a spring clamp but you can see i notched that okay all i did was just put a slice in the middle and kind of cut a little notch out nothing fancy and then i just slid the hose tube right over it it's right there you can see it heater hose 
Okay, wash machine and heater hose, that's all it is. I got it right at Home Depot or that kind of stuff. I'll put a link to a lot of these things online. That I probably won't just because, like I said, you can buy it at every store. It's all the same size as heater hose. It's standard. You get 10 feet. It's about a buck a foot, um, you know, so it's not expensive. And you can clamp them anywhere you want to. You don't want it on that side, slide this over and put it on this side. You can do whatever you want to. Or, oh, ends come off of it here. You stick that back on there. Um, if you want to, you can also do it like I did, where I just took my two ears and my sticks and spread them out. And that's all I did was just clamp that right on there, like that, one there and one there for that to carry the bow on there. So they're very versatile as far as putting my bow anywhere I want to put it and having it set up on there. So sweet, simple, and easy setup there. Now... <clears throat> Let's, uh, be, and then what other mods that I've done here, like I said, I did put these on. I will have links down below. Here's the little grommet pieces. I just left them hang down there so they don't lose tension. But they can go up and lock right on there and lock anywhere you want to hold your bow or anything you want up front. I put this light on here. This light is amazing. Um, it's dirt cheap and it's, as far as expensive goes. It's got three mode settings and it is uh, very, I'm going to try this one-handed. I probably can't get it one-handed. Uh, but it sli anyway, it slides on and off, this little simple rubber mount. But you push this tab down and it slides right off, and then here's a charging port. So it's USB chargeable, so you can leave it charging in your car overnight while you're gone and come back and be able to hook right onto that. So the whole light, just like I said, is just on this little push down here, and then I can't... Uh, there we go, got it. And it just slides on and off, and then you take this in the car and charge it with you. Just a simple little rubber mount. It works fantastic when you get there. When you get there, you know, when you're ready in the morning, slide it on and lock it. And your light is now officially on and ready. Weighs next to nothing and dirt cheap in cost. I got that. And this back one came in the same kit. I used an O-ring on the, this, again, just an O-ring mount. You can see it on there. Something very easy. I just clipped on this bar, but you can put it anywhere. That one's just a reflector. But this one actually lights. So you can see you got all kinds of, you can go through the modes. Uh, so when I'm coming out at night, you know, they're going to see me, um, you know, constant on whatever you want, press and hold, and it turns it off. But I just put that right on there. But again, I just, it came with three different size O-rings to mount that. But you got that in a kit with that and this. Both of them are USB chargeable. So you got a, you just plug it in with a cord um, and you can charge it. So it's nice. And they're, they're, again, I'll have a link down in the description below for you, but they're very, very affordable, not expensive. Now the rack okay this is a this is this rack is called the west bike west biking this is a 310 pound capacity rack okay that you can see here nice rack in here nice setup it's got these arms it even had one more set of arms that go from here up to there i'll show you on the other side um but it's very universal so it fits on pretty much any bike some bikes have mounting holes here for them. Some don't. Mine did not. So this is a great system. Cables run right through it so they're not hitting anything. Um, but you clamp it on here. These are adjustable legs and then you lock them in. And then there's one more bar that goes from here to there. I just didn't bother with it. It's like I, I don't think I need it. But you can put one more right there if you want that uh, connects those two together. Um, I didn't like the way it looked and I don't need it for anything so I didn't put them on. But this rack is very solid. Very, very solid and stable and it is adjustable so you can slide this anywhere on there that you want a lot of adjustability in it and simple connections on this so it's it's very very simple but very sturdy and solid and then i just put this crate on there this melt crate this is one of those oversized uh bigger melt crates again i'll put links to this stuff here for you so you can find it but it's bigger than your standard square melt crate so i get that more room yes it does hang off the back you can see where the end of the rack is right here and you got that extension so it does hang out a little bit but like i said the majority of the weight is going to be on this side here anyway next to you and uh, i'm not worried for what it's going to do it's going to work just perfectly i'd have no problem putting 60 pounds or 70 pounds of meat in there and and i mean i use these mount crates for my camera stuff all the time and all my lighting gear i've carried these with hundreds of pounds over 100 pounds in these things for years on end and they hold up so this crate is going to be perfect Simple um, pipe insulation, and I zip-tied it. Reason you're seeing double zip ties, like a string on the inside and a string on the outside is because I'm cheap and lazy. I had a whole ton of these little ones that were too short, so I just doubled them up to get me that on there. Um, 
but just zip tied them on there with a few of them just to keep it in place but that just keeps everything quiet anywhere any of my bow or stands or anything touches that it's not going to make much noise so very very easy setup um i did add this into here right here which is a pouch that your phone can go in so my phone can actually sit in here um, I can't show you because I'm actually recording this on my phone. But when I, you put your phone into this, in this slot, and it goes here, I can still touch through here and operate my phone. So I can use it for on X or anything I want to navigation-wise. I can access that. They give you a little rain cover. And I got a place to put them. Probably, most likely, will be my wallet and my keys that go in there while I'm on a bike just so I don't lose them. Um, and then when I go hunt, I'll take them out. But I'll probably keep my wallet in there. Uh, this thing was not expensive. I want to say it was like it, around 15 bucks. But it straps right to your neck. Two straps here. I just ran them all the way around because I didn't want to mess with the cables. But it's stable and it's functional. And it'll give me access to my phone being right there, waterproof, rainproof, protected, and uh, set up so I can use this. Because this thing is going to be used in the rain all the time. So <clears throat> it's going to give me nice options. And uh, I added just a uh, Walmart water bottle holder and water bottle. So nothing fancy there, just a way to carry a little extra water. I don't think you really need it because you do have the crate in the back, but I figured what the heck, why not? And uh, then I added this kickstand from Amazon, which is awesome. Again, completely universal, so it'll fit any bike. Just clamps on, real simple. It is aluminum, so it is pretty lightweight, if not that it matters on this. Um, but out of the way and then that peg is adjustable see where it says press you can press that and adjust the length of that foot up or down uh for to get the right height so this thing can press this and it can go all the way up or all the way down for whatever length you want it to be um it has got a pretty good wide foot on there which is nice so it's not sinking as you can see even here on the grass it's not sinking in even when i tipped it i can flip that bike off of it and it's not going in which is a nice thing it's a good uh, in the woods type kickstand. So that was well worth it. I also added new pedals, which I'll explain why here. The original pedals, which I put in here, they're plastic. They are not bad. I cannot, I don't think that they're, they're really horrible, but these are notorious because there's not nothing inside of these. I've, I've been mountain biking for a long time and these plastic ones, these things gunk up with everything and they just slow you down as you're trying to pedal because your foot's keeping that flat and you're supposed, these are spinning as you're spinning. Um, and they're not, they don't spin very well and they start to give you fits. So, um, they were dirt cheap. I can't remember what they were, but they were like 20 bucks. but they're good quality pedals, and they got good bite and traction on them, so you're not slipping a pedal. Um, they were not expensive, but I'll, again, I'll have links down below to them. I also put on this seat. Big, swin, comfortable, squishy, gel foam, nice padded seat compared to this one that was originally on it. And not that this is bad. This is actually pretty comfortable for mountain bike seats. A lot of them are horrible. That's not bad, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm. It's not like I'm racing this thing. Okay, it's not like I have anything to prove or I got to look cool. So uh, for a couple twenty bucks or something, I put that better seat on there, so I got more cushion and more more support there, which in my opinion was worth it. I also changed out the grips. I like lock-on style grips. Okay, they lock with a bolt right here. This is all part of the grip. Locks right there. And then this one bolts right here on the underside. You can see it. So there's a lock here, a lock there, and then a locking end cap. The reason I like these is they're fast and easy to change. Okay, um, Grips get beat up quite a bit. Well, these are fast and easy to swap out. They were not expensive. Again, I'll have links below. But I like this metal bar end to protect the bars. The original ones were not horrible. Okay, these are original. They are not horrible. Um, the downside is there's nothing here. And if you remember from the, the biking days as a kid, these little rubber things, as soon as you bump this against three trees, you're going to cut a hole through this. And then that end's going to end up opened up. Um, and I don't like that, you know, that that edge on there popping out of there. So, um, so I took these off because I wanted that solid metal bar end and changed those out. Again, preference, not a mandatory deal. And the only other thing I did was I put a chain stay, again, from Amazon. This just locks on with Velcro. But now as that chain hits, I'm not getting any noise as that chain, if I'm going over bumpy stuff, hits that. I'm not getting that tink, 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 you know, where you, you know, not hearing that hitting on that frame. It's just quieter. It keeps that noise off when your, your slack is hitting that. Uh, that. So just a, a simple little guard, again, for noise factor uh, and to keep that from getting all beat up. So... Um, and then let me see here how I mounted the crate. 
Uh, let me throw this stuff out. Oh, that's the other thing I changed. Hang on, let me set these over here. Um, and uh, how I mounted the crate, though, on here is industrial size zip ties. You can see I got zip ties here, zip ties in the, all the corners. I got I have these, some of these big ones, so I could have put a couple of these big ones on the corners. And uh, you know, you can see them on there. Just zip tied this thing to that rack is all I did. So nothing crazy or ridiculous, just mounted it on there. Um, this is the original stem. I also replaced this. I put this one on. Again, it was like 12 bucks. It was not much money, but it's shorter. So what it does, what that does is that moves these bars closer to the seat for me so i'm not quite so hunched over the original one was this size which you can see put those bars out there that much farther um, i went to a 35 millimeter stem i don't know what this one is the original one but see how much farther out those bars would be that moves those bars away from that seat and makes me hunched over more than i want to be i want a more upright position so i took this original one off and swapped it to that uh um you know to that 35 millimeter stem on there which was not expensive to do not hard to do um i did have to add in a uh, another spacer here right in here a little spacer ring right there but they're dirt cheap too i'll put links to that stuff below for you um but uh, you'll see inside your neck under here if i remove this i can show you let me pop the front of this off and get this out of the way here because it's hidden behind here all right, see these? These are all spacers right here. All bikes have them, spacer, spacer, spacer. These are spacers to allow for this to clamp in. Well, I needed to add in that one more spacer because of the shorter height of this section compared to the height on the original one. You can see how much longer it is here by my thumb from top to bottom versus that one top to bottom. So I had to add in another spacer in there to do that which is what they're designed for that's how these are designed to run is with spacers but i will put links below so if you're going to change that stem out you might want to get yourself um, an extra spacer in there as well too um, so those are basically the mods i did i did add in this which i will put a link to this is actually an incredible this is one of my old lens cases that i used to use to carry lenses in okay for a 70 to 200 millimeter lens and because this rack has these panner these are designed to prevent panner bags from hitting your tires okay that's why this framework is here well because of that it worked out perfect as you can see on the back of that to keep that from getting anywhere near my bike um by that tire and again i just zip tied it you can see the zip ties in there up here on the top i zip tied it to the crate which is that one and that one so zip tied it to the crate and i zip tied it to this frame right here inside of here i have everything i need okay i have a spare tube keep in mind this is a fat tire bike these tubes are huge okay but i have a spare tube right here hang on let me set that for a second tip over there we go and i have in here i have a pump Double action pump, so it works both directions. Easy peasy, flips open, can't do it really one-handed. There we go, hang on trying here. And it's basically a pump though, and it will pump everything up for you if you get a flat tire. The CO2 cartridges work too. I used to use those a lot when mountain biking, but the problem with them, I'm just gonna pull all this stuff out and set it down and I'll explain it to you. Um, the problem with the uh, CO2 cartridges is uh, if you you only get one or we only get one shot at them And then if it leaks again later, you're in trouble. So a pump is more important. I think um, But here's what I'm carrying in here. This is everything I got in there. Not much, but I got a tube right here a pump I got a tool kit. Okay. I bought this as a whole kit I'll put a link to it below for you on Amazon again We're not talking expensive stuff, but it's got all your wrenches and allen wrenches and everything you need to work on a bike um, and then this is a patch kit. It's got everything I need in there for patches, uh, glue, the whole deal. It's got multiple size patches that are self-stick for the fixing that, and two tire um, spoons to be able to take your tire off if you have to patch it in a tube. So that whole set goes right inside of this case right here perfectly and um you know and i got room to spare i could put more stuff in there if i wanted to but not a lot but it's like i said this pouch this lens pouch padded comfortable secure uh it works perfect right there it's going to do fantastic for those uh components that i want to have in there and then i have a cable 
back here, which I'm going to use to lock it to a tree. Um, again, this is 15 foot cable and a padlock, and it's just going to ride back here in the back end until I get to my stand. But this way, I can run that cable through the back tire, the frame, and the front tire, and around a tree. And a tree big enough that somebody's not cutting down with a handsaw if they want to try and take this stuff. So, all right, we'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. Had to move all the chemicals. We are, uh, sorry. Uh, I just had all my power washing chemicals delivered. I saw a truck pull up and had to get that taken care of. And But anyway, so back to this. So that's basically the bike. Uh, that's the setup. That's that rigid setup that's carrying that stuff. Um, it's a it's a great setup, and it's not. I do not have a lot of money in this. We'll talk about the bike itself in a second. I paid five hundred dollars for the bike, shipped to the house, um, and then uh, you know, I mean, accessory wise, I'll bet I got maybe a hundred and ten dollars, hundred and twenty bucks in accessories on this thing. Ballpark numbers don't be exact, but I think you're like twenty bucks for these, twenty dollars for the front and rear light combo kit, uh, ten bucks for the stem or fifteen bucks for the stem. Uh, the grips were like twelve bucks. Uh, I think it was 15 bucks for this. The pedals were $20. Uh, the seat, I think, was 20 bucks. The rack was $40 for this nice rack that's on here. I think it's 15 bucks for the kickstand. Pedals were 20 um, so I don't have much money in this. There's not a lot of money and you don't want a lot of money, um, in, into a setup like this. The reason for it is, is because this thing is going to get the crap beat out of it. Going in and out of hunts, the hunting spots is one thing, but, uh, you know, it's going to be chained to a tree when it's out there. There is a theft factor to it, uh, for in some places or vandalism factor for somebody who wants to be mean. Um, but realistically, I'm hoping it, I'm tucking it away. I'm not parking it right on the trail. I'm going to ride to where I want to go, get into the woods 30, 40, 50 yards, and then I'm going to chain this up to a tree. So hopefully that's not an issue. But the big reason you don't want an expensive one or to get crazy with is this thing is going to be covered with blood dripping all over the place, you know, in the back end from, from meat bags. It's going to get bounced around, beat up a little bit. And it's also going to spend all of its time... Um, Sorry, hit the wrong, there we go. But it is going to spend all of hunting season on the back of this Cherokee right here. It is basically going to live on this rack. I got a video I'll be making here pretty soon. I'm fine-tuning, finishing touches on this, but this motorcycle carrier is how I'm transporting it. It's literally like, this is like $120 versus they want four, five, six hundred $600 for decent racks to carry a mountain bike. And then they're only rated for like 70 pounds or 100 pounds. This is rated for 500 pounds. Works just is good and it was a hundred dollars 120 bucks shipped um I'll, I'll do a video coming up on that like i said i'm in the process of setting some things up and fine-tuning it right now but it's gonna that bike is going to live on the back of here be bouncing down dirt roads through mud holes through water uh in the rain road grime you name it all of that crap is going to get all over that bike it's going to get everywhere it's going to be a nightmare and it's going to be a mess for him and you're going to be dealing with all kinds of things rust issues all that stuff um you know i mean especially where we are in georgia you know we're only you know 40 minutes th or 30, 35 miles inland from the ocean. Um, you know, that kind of stuff, it all takes, a, it takes effect and cause on there. You got to keep that in mind. So for a hunting bike, I don't think it's a wise idea to go buying a $4,000 or $5,000 bike. And the people that I know that do, they're actually now moving, they're, they're making their hunting trips revolve around that bike. They're carrying it. They bought cargo trailers to transport that bike. I don't blame them. You spend $5,000 on a bicycle and uh, for the same price, you could have bought a motorcycle. Prices of all this stuff is just straight up stupid. It always has been. We used to race um, mountain bikes back in the day. Me and I raced BMX when I was a kid. Got really good at it. And then I we uh, ran me and Tucker, John Tucker from uh, you know from uh, Tucker Chronicles and, and owns TacticSaddle.com. Me and him used to do a lot of local mountain bike races. 20 years ago, 22 years ago when we were doing that stuff, even then we had $2,000 custom built bikes that we were running and they were incredible. Now those bikes are $5,000 for a bicycle. The prices of these things are insane. For the price of a $5,000 bicycle, I could buy a $5,000 motorcycle. You know, I mean, it makes no sense to me, but it is the nature of the beast. But in this scenario, for these, for your hunting bike, keep it cheap. 
okay don't get crazy don't get expensive now this one is is got some some nice features to it and the reason we bought it which we're going to talk about here in a minute but don't i, I don't think it's wise to go out and buy a a 1500 or two thousand dollar or three thousand dollar or four thousand um, dollar mountain bike to go taking out and beating it in the woods and and putting it through the abuse it's gonna like i said the mud the rain the grime the the, the mess it's not worth it all right let's talk about this actual bike Okay, the bike itself. What is it? Well, it just came out a month and a half ago or two months ago. It's pretty new. Maybe three months. Not, I, I don't know for sure, but it's, it's their brand new one. It is a Mongoose Dolomite ALX. Okay, that is important, is the ALX. There's a, there's a regular Dolomite, and then you can see it on here. The sticker's covered, but ALX. Okay, this is a whole different ballgame. The original Dolomite is four hundred dollars that you can buy today all over the place Amazon. You can get it. You can I ordered mine through Walmart.com. Okay, but you can get them. But uh, that AL or the uh, Dolomite, the original one, great bike, four hundred dollars. It is a steel frame, and it is uh, there. There's some differences. Okay, I'll tell you the differences. But it's a whole different ball game from this. So for four hundred dollars, you get the original Dolomite, which is a a great bike. I'm not knocking it, but you're gonna. This has got so many upgrades on it for a hundred dollars. So for the ALX version, you go to an aluminum frame, aluminum fork. Okay, alloy fork, aluminum frame. Um, so you get that. You're saving. I think it's 15 pounds lighter already over the Dolomite. You also get upgraded actual shifters okay it's a t cheap twist shift on the dolomite most people change them immediately on this alx you get the actual micro shift shifters which is a gold mine you get better brakes that are on here you get bigger brake rotors that are on here like that so you get a lot of improvement there you get much better tires that are on it you get a much better three-piece crank that's on it comes on this one with a sealed cartridge style bottom bracket which is very nice so you don't gotta mess with that too often you get an actual clamping seat post the uh, dolomite does not have that it's just a, a actual nut one that locks in you get a better seat that seat that's on here is better than the seat that's on the original dolomite right there and you get coming around on this side you get a two-piece crank in the front okay two or two-piece uh, cassette on here a, a double so you get a total of 16 gears versus i think the dolomite is only nine gears seven or nine gears uh but here you're getting double um and uh you got the you got an actual on the back here this is a full-blown sorry i saw a lot of wax i was shaking it and bouncing around but you get a full-blown actual removable cassette rather than a freewheel setup so this cassette is easily changed removed you can modify your gearing and do whatever you want to and it gives you good options you get a decent um, upgraded micro shift derailleur on here too so you get a lot of nice features that come with um with the dolomite alx and this was you know i paid 498 dollars um for this bike so for for in the other one i think was 410 for the original dolomite uh so for 80 bucks you get a heck of a lot more bike it's 15 pounds lighter upgraded wheels cranks seat stems bars the bars are longer on here too than the original dolomite these are wider bars uh so you get a lot of nice features um on this actual bike but it is still it is a a cheap five hundred dollar walmart fat tire bike which may not sound cheap but in a bike world it's cheap it's gonna work absolutely perfect it shifts exactly like i want everything goes fantastic on there um as soon as i got it i did take apart and grease the headset and i did grease the uh um i greased the uh, wheel bearings that are in there matter of fact you can still see i left a little bit of a mess on there um but i put, took those apart see it you can see the grease right here on the spokes right there um, but I re-greased uh, the hubs on the front back and then I also greased the bottom bracket a little bit but like I said it's a sealed cartridge I didn't realize that right off the bat um, but that's sealed so you don't got to mess with it but it's all done set and uh, ready to go and it's it's like I said I've only got about eight miles on it so far but I'm really liking it and uh, with that 16 speeds with that double double front on there um, you know and uh, eight gear in the back uh, like I said, it does pretty much anything you're going to want to. You know, it, it works. And all that stuff is cheaply upgradable. It doesn't cost a lot of money to uh, to make changes if you want to. So there's the bike. There's what I'm planning on doing with it, and that's how it's going to work. So hopefully you enjoyed it, and I will have one on that hitch carrier uh, coming up here pretty soon as well, too. Because, again, the weight of these things... When you put all this stuff in there, all my tubes, all that stuff, everything in there, I think this bike's like 37 pounds or something, 35 or 37 pounds 
before I put the rack, the basket, the stuff on there. So I'll bet you're coming in at probably ah, 40 to 40, 45 pounds, 43 pounds total. That's heavier. That's pretty heavy for a bike. So I, and, and like I said, given the fact that this thing is going to be on some of the nastiest, worst roads and trails and four wheel drive type stuff that I'm going to be putting this thing through on the back of that Cherokee, um, I want it to have solid support. I don't want it hanging on a little rack that's going to break, bend, fall off, get beat up, any of that kind of stuff. So that's why I went with this motorcycle rack, which like I said, I will have some details on that coming up soon. When we head to Georgia this year, we are going to tow this Cherokee behind my Ram 2500 so that we have both vehicles down there so that uh, when I'm out hunting and Tina's not with me, I can take that with that bike right on the back and uh, I'm not interfering with her if I want to be gone all day. So we're going to have both of those down there. So uh, there you go. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye.